you are doing these miracles. By whose authority you are doing all of this? And Jesus, if you're a Bible reader, you will hear the question. I'm going to ask you a question for, answer you a question by question. By what authority John the Baptist started to baptize people? By what authority John the Baptist started to baptize people? Everything is about authority. You want to have life in your life, it's about authority. And the authority is something that you need sometimes to keep clean, to keep it decent, to keep it shiny, to keep it brighter, to keep, make it lighter, and to make it more friendly so that people can get to you. Because you might have authority, but if you are not clean, you are not nice with other people, you are not dealing with the people friendly, you are treacherously dealing and cheating people and pushing like a bully people around, your authority may be trampled down. Your authority may be cut off from you because you are trampling everybody down. So everything we do in this revelation, the biggest thing is about authority. Example, even here, God is talking the seven star. He said, the mystery of the seven star that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lamps in this the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lamps are the seven churches. Though the church has no authority, the authority is an angel. And that angel, as I said earlier, they, we all believe they are archangel. But uh, archangel, I'm not going to go uh, into, we talk about different uh, archangels, a level. Uh, seraphim, cherub, and archangel who are the most powerful. Yeah, seraphim, cherub, and are more powerful. Archangel comes in. But angels, actually, a lot of them, the seven angels that we mentioned here, in the readings that we go further, are proven to do the three jobs altogether. They are seraphim, they are cherub, and they also are archangels. So most archangels are not just archangels. Most archangels can rank three levels. So that also is something that will talk to you later. So Archangel may be lower than the Seraphim and Cherubim, but those Archangel are pretty much, is like somebody who is a manager, is a supervisor, and is an employee too. He may be a supervisor, but he goes to the field, he works on the field, he can go to the office, he can also make phone calls, he can go to meeting of the boss. So he's not just a supervisor, he may be also a field worker who's on site and he's in the office to make this destroy. And he can also go to the big meeting with the big bosses. So Archangel pretty much does the same thing. They do three jobs, three time job at the same time. So God, that's why God trusted them even his own personal church. Because they, they're powerful, they, they can uh, motivate, they can go up and down. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a chapter number one of the Revelation and book, and we are speaking here the introduction of the seven star. The right hand, God put his hand, Jesus put his hand, and John saw seven star, which represent every church that existed. And I mentioned in this video, Laodicea is the last church. The last, last church where uh, we live in, where the judgment of God will come. And talking about the church, it comes to the chapter number two. I hope that we'll have another chance to discuss about the letter and uh, we'll do our video. In all general, uh, general explanation, there is hope in the resurrection because Jesus explained I was dead, and behold, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the Hades. So Jesus has the key, the keys, even say keys, of death and Hades. They are multiple keys. You see the big ring of keys? Yes, he has it. Every door, every situation, every circumstances, and every door, Jesus opens. He even took the key from death. He took the key from Hades. And he has that. He bound from, from, from heaven, on earth is bounded. He unbound on earth, on, on, on heaven is unbounded. So, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ is the best thing you can do. 
You may feel weak all the time. You may feel like you don't do things right. But if you believe in the word of Jesus Christ and you read this Bible, yes, every day is going to be giving you a shower of his love. Every day is going to give you a shower of his compassion. Every day is going to walk with you like a father walk with a son. If you have a son who smokes a cigarette, you're not going to persecute him. You will tell him what you think is best. Watch out for cancer, watch out for this, watch out for that. But it's now more than, more, less, more love for your sons or daughter. As much as God. The Lord God does not love you less because you make mistakes. God does not love you less because you have some habits. No, that's people want to make you feel guilty. People want to make you feel bad about yourself so that you can feel bad. You feel bad, that's your choice. I'm here to tell you that God loves you. He died on cross to go get the keys of death in the Hades. So whenever you die, you can find the door wide open. You can cross that, that, that path and go to him without asking no question. In other words, he paid off for a passage that we can go from life to death, to death to life back to him as he purposely done the work for. And also, as he was reading, and the first verses number 15, he said, his feet were like a bronze glowing in the furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing water. In his right hand, he held the seven star. And out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. A sharp double-edged sword. What do you see about a double sword? A double-edged sword. It's just the word of God may, may be extremely piercing. It can really get you straight, circumcise your heart. To circumcise your heart. People say, but why is the sword coming out of his mouth? Yeah, this is I said the authority. Everything is about the authority. The sword coming out of his mouth is a, a it's it's a mystery of the powerful, how powerful are his words. His words are so powerful that when God sends his word, he goes in a mission. The word of God goes in a mission and don't, don't, do not come empty handed. So his word is so powerful. It's like you see a police officer come with you with a gun. He said to you, move along. You, you are not gonna, you are not gonna argue with it. Like, oh, come on. Or you see somebody coming with a weapon to you. He said, uh, I, I come here to arrest you. Or you're gonna argue. He said, no, I, I don't want to fight with you. No. You got you stand no chance. You stand no chance unless that you also are up to greater, 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 greatness. The God will also give you the opportunity. Opportunity. Thank you very much for staying up with us. We'll appreciate the timing with you. The preaching of the day is about keep hope, open your mind, open your spirit, and brother and sister, if you are feeling too old in yourself. I can urge you from this video is a, is a simple advice to you. Go out in the mall. Go walk outside. Go in the mall. Get yourself something new in life. Try to see how could you do your things differently. And pray to God, your Lord, He will be able to save you and to give you whenever, whatever you need. These are the words of God that we are sharing today. And in verse number 8, he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. He was, he is, and he has to come, he is the Almighty. He simply means the most powerful God ever. As I say, authority. For human being, authority may be granted by God and with critics, with nagging, with all those things, you may end up to yourself wondering, how do I do things, how do I, how do I, I do that? But the word of God here, showing us the almighty God is introducing, first of all, who he is and what kind of power he's holding, almighty, 
and he's talking to the people in the seven churches, addressing the angels in the spirit world to fix what's going on in the church and to speak to the people in the church to fix their behavior so the Lord God may find them just and not destroy them. We thank you for coming here. You should have a chance to read Revelation number uh, chapter number 1 verses 1 to 20 and get yourself acquainted with every single word and try to understand. In this Bible, God is always trying to tell you what I said try because you may close it and put aside. It's not because it's not writing. It's just because you have more questions. As I say, people want to wonder, well, is he really existing? If God really exists, is he really great? I say, we do not have material in a human world, in a planet, that explains the origin of God. We do not. If anybody comes to you and say, I know the origin of God, this is the material about it, tell them to close the book because nobody has it. It's a, a bogus and a lie. What we have, it's the dust becomes human, human limbs, human being taken to sleep, Eve being created in Adam's rib, and Eve becomes a woman, and let on the side having children. And before men be created, look who created him, the creator. The, for, the, the formless land, the formless uh, planet, as God find the, the formless planet, he made it a living, uh, a living planet. So we do, ladies and gentlemen, we do not have the accuracy of the mystery of our Lord. Is our Lord God? Is 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 the creator of heaven and earth? He exists. He lives among us, and He said to us, "The day we will be with Him, He's gonna show us all the mystery." The Bible here says in the Revelation, God will even explain to us where He comes from. For now on, is a seal. The mystery of God will be revealed. If we go through the chapter number, the last chapter, the mystery of God will be relieved, will revealed. But why God revealed? I would tell you that you need to follow this teaching. It's good to believe. It's good to praise the Lord our God. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will be glad if you want to have a small prayer. You can write the email address that goes to this video. We will be able to follow you. Subscribe in our channels and take time to always follow what we do because what we're sharing, it's not difficult. We're not coming here to make you panic so that you can be going no. We came here to assure you everything God says in this Bible book, people that belongs to him will be put aside. And once they will be put aside, then God will open the seals in the chapter number six before they scroll in the chapter number for the lamb, God will put all everybody away. So everything they tell you, oh Christian, you be persecuted. Persecution existed in the Roman time against Christians. Persecution and tribulation existed. But I'm telling you the revelation does not uh, put Christian on 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 a destruction and persecution. I will try to tell you the tribulation. Yes, in the later on, I'll tell you there's angels, demons that come to try to wage war, but we will go through this slowly, slowly, step by step, one video at a time. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your concern uh, coming to us. My name is Douglas Chilombo. Our channel is Fix About God. If you are interested to continue this study, this reading, I will so, you know, recommend you to subscribe. Be strong. Be powerful. God uplift. You believe is going to uplift you. You have some habits. I'm not coming to say, yes, you can repent. Your repentance, I can say to you, is believe that God exists. Jesus Christ is God. That the slightest things I can ask you to do. I'm not going to ask you change the lifestyle that you have been, you have. No, I am not here to destroy your spirits. I'm here to tell you. No matter what you've been going through, no matter what you believe is right, no matter what you think you do doing, if you believe in your path of journey of life, that God is real, Jesus is God, and he's going to help and save you, amen, you will get the grace of God. We're going to uh, close our uh, uh, broadcasting by having uh, another prayer. Lord God, all my years of heaven and earth, 
Allah be the name. Thank you very much because you are a great and a very powerful. We love that you're sending your angel, yourself, Lord Jesus, to speak to us in the mission of giving us the truth about that you are Alpha and your Omega. And we want you really to be the Alpha and the Omega of our lives, for our spirit, for our souls, so that our ways of life may be maintained strongly powerful in that presence. And I praise everything that you're doing, helping the, the mankind, your patience, your ways of doing your justice is so great and so kind to us. We have living thanks to you. In all, I recommend the whole livings, the whole souls on this world, on this world, into your hand. In your name, in the name of Jesus. So we pray and we close our uh, chapters. We invite you to come again tomorrow. We will go for chapter number two. We will explain as we progressing, as the information we get better because you go through different verses, then I'll be opening more lines, more click for you to see what the link means, what this what, what, what is all about, because people have more questions. The authority of God has nothing to do where it stands. The authority of God travels and lives within. God may leave the heaven and goes in a path, another journey to go for another discovery. Uh, yes, is job is not done yet. His authority won't stay in heaven. Heaven has been managed by his authority. The earth is managed by his authority. Because Jesus said, let your will be done on the earth like is done on the heaven. The will of God is being done on heaven. And the will of God is being done on earth. The will, the authority of God has no dwelling place. It dwells everywhere. It was where it goes, it was as it's working. So God is not a static sitting in heaven and sending another uh, another body that no. As God went, that's mystery as he went. People may say, but the body be born how long? I say to you, the creation that you know is a man being created from the dust, not the creation of God himself. So let us hand, be handed over what we can receive and understand. And let us, when time is appropriate, I'll give you more. I will explain to you more and more and more. Because what God is a spirit. God is a spirit. The spirits can get into a body in a second. I'll give you an example before we close this broadcasting quickly because you might not feel that short. Samson, for example, the strongest powerful man on in the Bible, Samson did not have his power all the time. Only when the Philistines were attacking him, only when he felt he was in danger, the Bible said the Spirit of God was falling on him and Samson was becoming more powerful. The Spirit does not wait for the body to be conceived so you can get into it. The spirit exists before every time. And God is a spirit. is not body. is a spirit. And the word, I am visible. As I'm speaking, you can see my mouth moving, but you don't see the word coming out of my mouth. You can hear that. So this invisible, how the spirit is invisible. Though people want to make it we want to make it a logic like 1 plus 1 equals 2. No, we're not talking about 1 plus 1 equals 2 here. We're talking about God, the Almighty. Yes, yes when the body was formed, when the body, God said, before, this, after the son, the, 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 the kids knows what is right and what is wrong, my spirit will dwell on him. So, let's, uh, let's go further. I will explain it on. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to our channel. Get tuned, get subscribed. We will correct some information if you have questions. In the name of God, I bless you. Be blessed and be most powerful. Amen.